this is Rachel and this is a hopefully encouraging video about what to do to deal with weather setbacks in the garden. This spring, I mean we never have a normal spring in Michigan. Um, it's not a great growing season here. It goes from really cold to sweltering hot pretty quickly in a normal year and this year was insane um, and so for those of you who have also experienced this especially those of you who are growing a garden for the first time uh, which is who we're trying to create these videos for um, I know it can be really really frustrating and with everything else that's going on between the COVID outbreak and the protests here in the United States I think it's just felt like a crazy time so I thought we would do a short video on things you can do to feel more in control and to recover when you've had setbacks and strange weather. Now in our case, I have actually put together a graphic here to show you how crazy the weather has been this spring in Michigan. So we went from an incredibly late freeze. Uh, we, we had a freeze down to 28 degrees Fahrenheit in mid-May and that's very, very late for us. Uh, that's about two weeks past our normal last frost date. And so a lot of folks had already put their summer plants out into the garden only to then have them die, which is incredibly discouraging. Now, luckily we saw the weather forecast, the 10 day forecast, and we didn't put the plants out, but it did mean that our plants sat in those biodegradable grow bags that I use. And even though I have great soil in there and amendments and everything else, they were struggling, right? They, they'd gotten really big, they were ready to go in the ground, and then I had to pause and wait until we got through that last freeze. And so it was 70 degrees outside, it was gorgeous, but I couldn't plant anything. When we finally got them in the ground, um, they, they were a little sad, right? They'd been in those transplants, transplant bags a little too long. And right after we got through that freeze and got them in the ground, we had a 60 degree temperature swing up in the space of two weeks. And in that same two week period where we had a 60 degree increase in temperature, we also had a 500 year flood. And when I say 500 year flood, this was not a little bit of rain. This was dams breached. We had to, you know, cities got evacuated. It was massive. And so not surprisingly between staying in grow bags a long time and then going in th to the ground, going through a huge temperature swing, going through a flood, we did lose quite a few of our plants. And I just wanted to quickly insert a video here that walks through and shows uh, some of those casualties. So you can kind of see here the squash, for whatever reason, one of them loved it and did really well and totally shot up. One of them, this little guy, I think made it, he survived, um, but looking a little stressed. And then, I don't even know if you can see the corpse here, but this squash did not make it, not even closely. Um, or not even close, I should say. And so what I'm gonna do is kind of document some deaths here. Um, the other ones that didn't make it, this is a, this is a watermelon, I uh, don't think that one's gonna make it. Um, our cucumber actually did pretty well, held up, looking a little stressed, but I think it's gonna live. And then I'll kind of walk down the line here. Um, these are tomatoes. There should be a melon here. There's no melon there, uh, not even a ghost of a melon. So they just didn't make it. A, a lot of them just died in that flooding. Um, and so even though I waited until after the freeze to put them out, it's like the flooding got them. What can you do when these things happen? Um, because it doesn't matter how long you've been growing, when this stuff happens, my, my plants died too, right? This is, this is just what happens. So three options. Um, the first is reactive. So you can essentially plant something new. And I do like to think of these kinds of opportunity, these kinds of challenges as an opportunity. It's like, hey, free garden space, I wonder what else I can grow. So it's one option. The second option is proactive. So when you know that something like this is coming, um, there are steps that you can take to mitigate the impact. And there are also things you can do with the design of the garden in general uh, to help make it more resilient to things like this. So I'll show those. And then last is just acceptance. Um, and in all seriousness, uh, these things are gonna happen all the time. And so to some extent, planning them in ahead of time and making them part of your garden plan um, can be really, really helpful. So this year I had a mix of all three of those approaches um, and I recommend that. And I'll start with the reactive. So in the case of the squash plant that I showed that died, um, I went ahead and put in bush beans and I'll show that in a second here. The logic there is they grow quickly. Um, it didn't matter that they were going into the ground, you know, a couple weeks late, they, they, they're fast growers. 
And then the other logic on that one is that they fix nitrogen with their roots and so it makes the soil better in that bed and that bed is almost entirely summer crops uh, like tomatoes and peppers and squash and they're all pretty heavy feeders so it's not a bad idea to get an extra shot of nitrogen in there anyway um, so i just took this as an opportunity to fit three little bush beans into that same bed now when it came to replacing my trellised crops uh, so the melons that didn't make it and those uh, red noodle beans that never germinated. I think they just drowned in the soil. Um, I took advantage of something that we normally think of as a problem, which is tomato suckers. And it is true that you do want to prune those off. I'm usually pretty ruthless about it, but I will often leave one sucker at the base of the plant. Um, not gonna lie, sometimes that's accidental and I just miss them. Um, but I also will do it on purpose. And the reason is that those are essentially a free tomato plant. So there are two things you can do with those. Um, you know, I'll let them grow pretty big, cut them off if I don't need them. If you do need them, then when you cut them off, that's a pretty healthy plant. And you can soak them in water, uh, just put them in a glass of water. And, I've, and then after several days, I think I'm gonna let them go for about a week, you can root them in soil and you can let them set roots and grow and then put them out in the garden. Those are then going to give you a staggered harvest. So because they're going into the ground later and they've, you know, they get set back a little bit when they get clipped off and stuck in the soil, they're going to start producing their full crop several weeks after the rest of your tomatoes have already kind of faded. And so, you know, to get a staggered harvest, one option is to plant tomatoes with different maturity dates. And I did do that in the garden. The other option is simply to take a sucker off of an existing plant and make a second plant out of it, and it'll naturally be staggered by a few weeks. So it's not a bad thing. It actually gives you um, an extended harvest and a little bit more variety in the garden. And then the second option with suckers um, is if you leave them in place, if something dies on your trellis and you've got some room that opens up next to a tomato plant, you can take that bottom sucker and you can just train it over to one side and train the, the main stem over to the other side and essentially get like a capital Y shaped or, or wishbone shaped uh, tomato. So instead of a single stem, you can get two. And that is another way to essentially double the amount of production that you're getting off that plant um, with really just the same amount of trellis space. So as far as reactive steps that you can take, you can plant something totally new, you can root a clipping off of something that you have, um, or you can just trellis and train things to take up more space than you would normally allow. Moving to the proactive approach, uh, I thought I would talk about what we did with our plants that are prone to bolting. So we saw this forecast, we saw the 60 degree temperature swing, and we knew that our crops like lettuce and spinach were not gonna do well in that heat. Um, and so I'll put in a video here of what I did for the lettuce. Um, the short version is I just did a really, really hard harvest. I just cut it down almost to the ground, and I figured if I get no more you know, yields of this, it's okay. We had a lot of really good production off that lettuce. Um, and then, if it was you know, cut way back and starting to grow again, it might miss the worst of the heat, right? So by the time the plant recovered, we were gonna have lower temperatures again, and that did end up working. And then I'll put in another clip showing you know, what it looked like later when I show you the last little part on acceptance. Um, I'll give an update on the lettuce. When it comes to the spinach, I actually had an accidental experiment that I wanted to show here. And if you follow us on Facebook, you already saw this because we put that clip up. But in addition to the microclimates that I intentionally design into the garden, and I mentioned that in the video on our uh, creating a vegetable garden from scratch series, we had a whole video about garden layout and planning and design. And with that, um, I did include microclimates. So I put our lettuces and our spinaches behind the trellis in the bed in the back corner. And that way, as the tomatoes grow, they will help shade it out um, and give them a little bit of relief from the sun. So that's intentional, that was planned. And that's, you know, helping to, that's one of the things you can do, right, when you think about how to handle weather setbacks. One option is to create these microclimates so that in the event that you do get a high heat wave, you've created some shade and you've given your plants a little bit of relief. In our case, um, we had this accidental experiment where I had replaced a plant after the rabbits ate my spinach. Um, I had some holes in the spinach, so yet again, rolling with it, right? I had some celery and I went ahead and planted it. And you'll see in this clip, um, it ended up creating yet another shady microclimate, uh, which really, really helped the spinach. While that celery experiment was accidental, um, I'm now going to include it in my garden plan for next spring um, to really kind of further create that microclimate that I try and do with the trellises and give the, give the spinach kind of like a double shade. So I'm um, really happy with that and I'm gonna make it intentional next year. 
And then the last option for rolling with it is acceptance, right? So as an example, arugula. Um, I'm gonna show you a clip in a second. What we did with the arugula, it bolts every year. It's still an awesome thing to have in the garden because it grows so fast. So we get a, a crop of arugula before we get a crop of anything else, and we get a lot of it. It's nice, it's fresh, it adds a bunch of green when you're getting almost nothing out of the garden. So we always grow it, um, but it will bolt before everything else, and we just know that and we accept it. And so let me show you how we turn that into a positive as well. It has been three weeks since I did the backup plan with the beans. And as you can see, they're doing really, really well. So I would say that this particular piece of the rolling with it plan is working quite well. And then I'm going to walk around here to the other bed and show my arugula. And this has, not surprisingly, bolted. So I'm filming this particular segment in mid-June. We had some really crazy temperatures, as mentioned, and everything kind of shot up. Um, you'll see a couple of things. The lettuce that I did the really hard harvest on, uh, the one that I described as like clear cutting a forest, it came back really, really well. Um, after that spike in temperature, things moderated back out. We've had temperatures more in the kind of mid 70s lately and cooler mornings in like the 50s and 60s. The lettuce is loving that. It came right back. Um, the Lola Rosa came back. The little gem butterhead came back. So in general, this is doing well. Um, and what you're seeing here is actually after I did a pretty hefty harvest off of it. We had friends over for dinner and I did a salad for like four adults and a couple kids. And so this is actually after I picked over it, um, we're getting a ton of production, which is nice. But the thing about the arugula is I intentionally leave it after it bolts. And the reason is pollination. It bolts before everything else, but it also then flowers. And I can leave it here attracting pollinators so that my tomatoes, my peppers over here, will all benefit from it. By the time the arugula is spent and gone, um, when we get into later summer, and I've gotten my basil harvest, I'll then let these guys set flowers. And by then the high sop and the borage will also be flowering. Just thought I would kind of talk about the, the rolling with it. Um, one of the things you can do is to just anticipate what's gonna happen um, and accept it. And so the first, first thing is acceptance, right? So accept that your arugula is gonna bolt and think about what to do and how to make that a, an advantage. So quick little note there on uh, the acceptance part of rolling with it. So the key message for today is um, this happens. Don't get discouraged, don't give up there definitely don't feel powerless because there is almost always something that you can do to turn this into a positive to grow something else to get another yield um, it just it is what it is and I think that to some extent it helps us become more resilient people and to learn to roll with the punches uh, which is not a bad thing just in life uh, so I think gardening for me is becomes this kind of microcosm of life and uh, and how to best handle life so Again, don't give up. Just keep working on it, keep going. You'll still get an awesome garden. For those of you that are still in this, I really hope that you're having a fun and productive garden. I'm gonna continue posting content that I think might be helpful. So the next bit is gonna actually be a review of our spring crops and our summer crops. Start with, starting with the spring ones, but which ones handled this crazy weather really well? Um, because that was a good sort of force, forcing function for me to see which ones I wanna plant again next year. And which ones I don't. So I'm going to talk about that in an upcoming video. I'm also going to talk about changes we're going to make as I transition from the summer garden to the fall garden because I don't plant the same things in the fall that I do in the spring um, for different reasons and so I'll walk through that as well. So make sure you subscribe to this if you want to get notified when those go up and then I do put shorter version videos up on our Facebook and Instagram pages with quick tips like that celery experiment the morning that I found it um, or how to prune things and so if you want those just follow us on those channels and you'll get notified for those as well but as always I hope this was really helpful I hope it was encouraging um, hang in there and it's still gonna be a great growing season thanks mm -hmm.